Katie Salen is a game theorist and game designer, and she works also in the area of the intersection between gaming and education. She founded a school called Quest to Learn, which is designed on game principles, and everything students learn is based upon a mission that they have to complete. And when they complete the mission, they create stuff that shows what they've learned. Anyways, I saw a short video that she she shared uh, that was made by the MacArthur Foundation. And in the video, she's talking about play and the importance of play and how we learn. She talks about, and I've seen this with my own children, how very young kids, play is the framework through which they understand their world. It's the way that they learn everything. And I, I mean, I've even seen my kids take little dolls and pretend to be the voices of both sides, have discussions, have arguments, and try to figure out, develop their own young understanding of how the world works by the way their toys interact as they play with them and talk it through. When they get a little bit older, say grade one, play becomes relegated to a certain time, recess. And when they get older still, as they move into middle school, play is no longer relegated to a certain time, there's no more recess, it's relegated to a device when they play a game, usually a video game. <laughs> so, I mean, I was really struck by that. I think play is I always say when someone wants to learn something new, uh, even when I'm teaching math, I would say, well, just play with the numbers. And students were often so resistant to doing that. It's how I learn any new technology. It's how I learn or develop an understanding of any new ideas. I kind of play with it in my head. So in the last little while, the workshops I've been doing around using, say, iPads in education, has always centered, instead of telling someone how an app works, I design a little mission for them and where I suggest that they use an app, they don't have to use it, and they go off and they learn all sorts of stuff and come up with all sorts of really neat ideas uh, that I had never thought of when I originally designed the activity for them. And a little while ago, um, John Holden put together this Google Doc with a list of what he calls tiny math games. Uh, started with a conversation on, I think, Jason Dyer's blog and then Dan Meyer's blog. And, uh, anyways, they've got the list of all these little math games that you can very quickly play, and they have some deep mathematical ideas behind them. Uh, one example is the game of NIM, M N I M. Uh, there's a game that I play with my kids called Geography, and you say any the name of any city, any country, it doesn't matter what it is in the world, and then you have to find uh, whatever letter it ends with, so we start with Canada, I've got to find the name of a place that starts with the letter A, because Canada ends with A. And now my kids and I are always trying to look for new places around the world that, and learn the geography of those places. Gaming is a real powerful framework for learning. And I'm wondering how we can bring those games more and more into the classes that we teach. I wonder, I bet you've got some kind of games that you use that you learn, short little easy games that maybe have some deeper principles lying behind them. What are those games? How do they work? Um, in what ways do you use any type of gaming in your class and what's the impact on your students? Do those classes typically run well? Um, how do they stack up against the classes where we share some information with the students and we do kind of a me do, you do, we do, or me do, we do, you do? Let me know in the comments on this video, how does gaming find its way into your class? And does it add any value to what you teach or how your kids learn?